Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to be talking about fractions on a number line, specifically how we can compare them and how that number line is really going to help us compare those fractions. So our learning goal for today says, I can compare fractions using a number line. So make sure that you have your dry erase board before we get started. All right, so we're going to start with our application problem today. It says third grade students are growing peppers. The student with the longest pepper wins the green thumb award. Jackson's pepper measured three inches long. Drew's measured 10 fourths inches long. Who won the award? Draw a number line to prove your answer. So friends, you're gonna pause the video and you're gonna draw a number line. And then you're going to find where three inches would be on your number line and where 10 fourths would be on your number line. Remember, your number line is going to go from zero to what? What's the farthest distance? Yeah, three inches, right? And then what's the fractional unit you're gonna divide each inch into? Because you should have zero and then the whole numbers, one, two, and then three. So each one of those whole numbers you need to divide into what, friends? fourths because your fraction is 10 fourths. Okay, so pause the video, draw your number line, find where each one of these would be on the number line. So where would Jackson's pepper that's three inches long be modeled and where would 10 fourths inches long also be modeled? And then that will help you determine who won the award. So pause the video, solve, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here's my number line from zero to three. I have to fill in those missing whole numbers, one and two, okay? And then I can divide each whole number into fourths. So from zero to one. Oh, friends, why do you think I didn't have to do from zero to one? Yeah, because we know that one is four fourths and 10 fourths is already larger than that. So I don't even have to start there. So I can split up the rest of my number line, save a little bit of time. Now, if you split up from zero to one, are you wrong? No, not at all. That's absolutely fine to do that too. Okay, so between one and two, I'm gonna split up into fourths. That means you need three lines, okay? And then from two to three, you would also need three lines to split it into fourths, okay? So once you do that, now you're ready to label them. My one whole, we know, is four fourths. Then I'm just gonna count up on each one of my numbers to label my number line. So I'd be at four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths, nine fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths, and 12 fourths. So now that I have all of that labeled, I'm able to label um, Jackson's pepper and Drew's pepper. So here is Drew's pepper of 10 fourths inches and Jackson's pepper is here at three inches. So based on my picture here and my number line, Jackson won the award since three inches is longer than 10 fourths inches. Okay, we know that it's further from zero. So that helps us to determine the correct answer. Okay, so let's jump in today to, into today's lesson. So let's use this number line to measure and compare. Okay, so remember comparing is just greater than, less than. Okay, so what fractional unit does the number line show? Remember a fractional unit is how many parts. So how many parts are in this number line? All right, it's split into thirds. Yeah, there's three equal parts. Let's place a container on one third and two thirds. Okay, so here's a container. Here's another container. We're actually gonna do a bean bag toss with this, so that's why I need these containers at certain places. Okay, so I'm gonna label those so I don't forget. And how can we use thirds to help us place one sixth on the number line? Ooh, that's a little tricky, right? Well, one sixth is right in the middle of the first third, so right here. Okay, so that's another trick. When you're splitting up into thirds, if you want to split into sixths, just draw each one of those thirds in half, and then you'll be having your sixth labeled as well. All right, so I'm going to put a container there too. 
So looking at the number line, where can we place our last container so that it's the greatest distance from zero? So where's going to be the greatest distance or the farthest point away from zero? Yeah, we can put it on one because that's the furthest point from zero on the number line. All right, so let's say I come up to the number line, here I go, and I see it at zero, and I'm going to toss a bean bag into one of the containers. So here's my bean bag. I'm going to give it a toss. Which container will be the hardest for me to toss the bean bag into, and why? Which one do you think? Do you think I'll get one sixth, one third, two thirds, or one? Which one is going to be the hardest one for me to toss the bean bag into? Yeah, probably one, right? Because it's the farthest distance from zero. All right, so I'm going to give it a try. Ah, oh, I missed it. Okay, well, I, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to try one more time, one more time. All right, so here's another bean bag. Let's see if I can get it. Ah, oh, man, I was even worse that time. Okay, well, see, it's true. That is the hardest one to toss into because it's the furthest distance from zero. All right, so here's another bean bag. Which container will be the easiest to toss the bean bag into and why? Yeah, probably one sixth because it's the closest to me. So when it's the closest, I hopefully I'll be able to get it in there. So let's see. Nailed it. Woo. I got it. So because it was the closest to me standing at zero, it was the easiest. It was the shortest distance from it. So I can tell that one whole is greater than one sixth because it's farther from zero. Okay, so now I need some of my teacher friends to help me toss some bean bags. So here I have Mrs. Glenn, our principal, Mrs. Holt, our computers teacher, Mrs. McDougal, our PE teacher, and Mr. Walker, our fourth and fifth grade math teacher. So Mrs. Glenn is up first, and she is going to try and throw her bean bag into the container at one sixth. Do you guys think she could do it? Oh, I think she can do it. Let's see. Ah, oh, boom. She nailed that one too. Okay, awesome. So again, like that one was closest, so it's probably easier to be able to toss that bean bag in. It's closer to zero. All right, so now Ms. Holt is up next, and she is going to try and throw her bean bag into the container at one third. Do you think she could do it? Ah, I hope so. Let's see. Oh, she nailed that one too. Nice. Okay, so again, probably because that's closer to zero. So it's probably easier to be able to get into there. All right, so now Miss McDougal's up next, and she is going to try and throw her bean bag into the container at two thirds. Oh, this one's greater, a greater distance from zero, right? So that might be a little bit harder. Let's see. Oh, so close, Miss McDougal. She was so close, but she didn't make it. It's because that's farther away, so that makes it harder, right? So kind of if we're comparing these fractions as we're going, like one-sixth is less than two-thirds because it's closer to zero. Or you could say two-thirds is greater than one-sixth because it's farther away from zero. All right, Mr. Walker is up last, and he's going to try and throw his beanbag into container at one Oh, I don't know, guys. What do you think? I think it's going to be hard. I couldn't do it. I tried twice, and I couldn't do it. But let's see. It's the greatest distance from zero, so let's see if he can do it. Oh, wah, wah, wah. He didn't get it either. It's hard. That greatest distance from zero is going to be harder to be able to get to. All right, so let's analyze our results. Mrs. Glenn nailed it at 1-6. Mrs. Holt nailed it at one third. Mrs. McDougal was close. She couldn't quite get it into that two thirds container though. And Mr. Walker didn't make it into the one either. So let's kind of talk about this a little bit. So why is a fraction's distance from zero important for a comparison? Why would that be helpful? Like this activity that we just did, why is that kind of helpful for us to see how far they are from zero? Ah, 
Ah, because knowing the distance from zero lets us determine how close the fraction is to zero. So we're able to compare which one is closer to zero or which one is farther from zero. Okay, so how would the comparison change if a person stood at a different place on the number line? So let's say Mr. Walker stood at zero and tried to throw to one hole, but let's say Miss McDougal stood at two thirds and tried to get it into one hole. How is that gonna change if they stand at different places? Hmm. Oh, it would be hard to compare because the distances would be different. The distance the beanbag flew wouldn't tell you how big the fraction is anymore because they're not starting at the same place. Okay, so that's an important thing to be able to think about. What if we toss beanbags to containers at the same points from zero to one on a different number line, but the difference from zero to one was different? Well, how would the comparison change, or how would the comparison of the fractions change if the number line, if the line distance from zero to one was shorter or longer? So let's say instead of it being, like right now it stretches almost all the way across the screen, right, my number line. Well, what if it only stretched halfway across the number line and was still split into thirds? That's like what that question is really asking us. Well, if the whole changes, the distance between the fraction also changes. So it's still going to be one third and two thirds, but the space in between those is going to be smaller. So if the number line was shorter, then the distance to toss each bean bag would also be shorter. So the longer, so a, long, non, a longer number line would have a longer distance between. Okay, so that's just like that example. If I have right here, this is a longer number line, so there's a bigger gap of space in between each fraction. But if I shrunk the one hole from zero to one to half of my screen right here, then each one third would be smaller. So it'd probably be easier if you had a smaller um, number line. Okay, hmm. those are good points. Okay, so let's think back to our application problem. What in the application problem relates to the length of the toss? So remember we were talking about um, the length of the peppers, right? So that is um, talking about, maybe we could kind of think about that as the same as our tossing of the bean bags, right? So we just use a number line to model both. How did we use the distance from zero to show the length of the peppers? Maybe this will help you if we bring this back up to kind of jog our memory. Yeah, we use the number line like a ruler and we saw that three is farther from zero than 10 fourths. Okay, so let's pretend we measured the giant peppers with yards instead of inches. So one pepper measured three yards long and the other measured 10 fourths yards. How would the comparison of the fractions change using yards rather than inches? So yards are much longer, right? So yards are much longer than inches, but even though the measurement units changed, 10 fourths yards is still less than three yards, just like 10 fourths inches is less than three inches. So it's not necessarily the big focus doesn't need to be on the unit itself, it's still talking about those fractions, okay? All right, so awesome job with that. All right, you guys rock. You guys did great with comparing fractions on a number line. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.